YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage plaguing here. And um, the last match that we have, and I can go ahead and start this from the replay screen, because now you know that we're going into five games. The reason why I show most of the tournament battles um, from the uh, starting in the battles so that you can't see on the replays what the next battle is. But at this point, you know there was five battles, so I can go ahead and start it from here. And this is actually faction-wise, I think, going to favor Armenian King. He's got a huge rush army of Bowie, but he's coming up against a horde of missiles um, from the Chimerians. Chimeria, Chimerians, Chimerians, something like that. Whatever, whatever they are. Um, I used to call them Samaria because to me yeah, that's the way it's spelled would make me want to, you know, use a softer C there. But whatever. I think it's Chimeria. Two Levy Freemen. No, three. Four, five, six Levy Freeman. Or no, is that Spirit Warriors? Let's see what else. Levy Freeman. Levy Freeman. So I see five Levy Freeman, one Spear Warrior. Axe Warriors. Sword Followers. I should have just looked at the opening screen. So one Oath Sworn and then a mix of Sword Followers and Axe Warriors. Of course, four Heavy Horse. Noble Horse Archer pick from Danko. And I've seen Danko play this way quite a bit, where he will bring a. Horse skirmish heavy uh, build, and then just keep his army parked in the back, forcing the opponent to advance through all of the um, the horse skirmishing fire. Those spear warriors took a pretty painful charge, actually, from the uh, armored horse archers. They did not use cavalry counter tactics. Probably a good idea, knowing that they're going to just retreat anyway. But yeah, these uh, noble horse archers are going to be pretty painful on the charge, so I guess that's why I brought them. The only thing I'd be worried about is how heavy the, the, the noble horse archers are. Let's take a look. I can keep the mouse on a medium. Okay, so they're medium to the heavy. I'm assuming heavy horse or heavy. That wouldn't make much sense. Yep. So even if they get tired, they should be able to stay in front of heavy horse. So that's a safe pick here. If there was a light horse on the field for the Bowie Eye, it might be a little more dangerous for Danko. He's got four step lancers. Uh, these guys aren't going to last long, but they can deliver a charge or clean up skirmishers. And I'm assuming there's a couple of Chimerian heavy archers, maybe some step archers as well. I can't see all of Danko's army, but... Again, this is the kind of play that I'm used to seeing from Danko based on tournament battles that I've seen on other channels. It seems like he likes to kind of make the opponent uh, come forward under the missile fire. And, you know, his noble horse archers are out here just kind of going to harass the, the enemy army all the way forward. But I think intelligently, Ar Armenian King has brought a lot of spear units with precursor javelins, and that's going to make it very hard, even for this many horse archers, to get an angle. Because um, you have to really be uh, have your wits about you. Um, or else these levy freemen can quickly pay for themselves with a painful spear volley into very expensive horse archers here. But yeah, again, the noble horse archers, if they get to the late game, can deliver some punishing rear charges. And here, where these levy freemen don't get a javelin volley, they're going to get crushed in a charge here. Uh, again, the noble horse archers are dangerous on the charge, and when they knock these guys over and then retreat, you shouldn't see a javelin volley coming from the levy freeman. Um, so, going to be an effective trade there for Danko, and well done. He's going to need to be patient, and he's going to need to do everything he can to kind of pick apart the Bowie army, because the closer the Bowie army gets, the more dangerous it's going to be. He's He's brought step archers instead of a whole bunch of Chimerian heavy archers, probably because the Bowieite don't have a great answer archer-wise, um, so there's no need to probably spend a ton of money on the heavy archers. Though they would have fended off heavy horse better. Let's see, Scythian hoplites, Chimerian noble infantry. So, let's see, four Scythian hoplites probably. Maybe more than that, yeah. I think probably six, close to six Scythian hoplites. No, it looks like five. One regular hoplite, two nobles. And then his four step lancers. Ooh, see, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's all it takes. One little mistake like that. These horse archers take eight men lost to uh, a levy freeman. <laughs> Excuse me. Still quite sick. Um, yeah, I mean, levy freemen are just a huge pain because really the noble horse archers need to get the Bowie Eye cavalry off the field. If they can do that, then and Camaria has a very real chance to pick apart the enemy army and then rear charge them while they're trying to chase skirmishers. But if the heavy horse can't be taken off the field, Camaria is going to have no answer to it. And it's going to pin them in place while the Bowie Eye infantry catches up and summarily destroys the Camarian army. Let's see if this charge was effective. Charged into Levy Freeman. Quite a few kills. And it looks like they're going to get away. Oh, it's going to be very close, though. If these guys get mismicroed here, it's going to be bad. A javelin volley comes out and kills quite a few of them, so 
41 kills so far in that Noble Horse Archer. Not bad. Very close call there for Danko. He's going to need to watch out for that kind of stuff. Again, in my mind, it takes a lot of skill to to pull off the type of play that Danko's trying here. Uh, you know, just a few mistakes and the whole thing can go south. As long as he doesn't use too much ammo on these spear units and he can get them off the field, it'll end up being good. So see like right here where the Levy Freeman turned to run? That heavy horse though is perilously close. And if Danko pulls away, he could take a javelin volley in return. He's lucky he does not. So good call though by Danko to get out of there. Uh, a Levy Freeman made to waver over here. A uh, heavy horse getting very close to catching this noble horse archer, which has now taken quite a lot of damage. Only 83 kills. Not bad. It's used precision shot, too, and it looks like it's going to get tired. So, I mean, definitely getting kills with the noble horse archers. 72 there. Uh, looks like 80-something there. 7 on this unit. Not a ton yet. And what do we got? 66 there. So quite a few kills, but unfortunately for, for Danko, a lot of it's just on Levy Freeman, and that's the value of these units, is the fact that they don't have any value, um, monetarily speaking. That's why they can be so good. See, like right here. Ouch. Javelin Volley. I mean, just kills a few more Horse Archers. It's going to be the same thing that's going to happen right here to these Step Lancers. Javelin Volley. So, and again, the, the fact that Levy Freeman have Precursor Javelins probably makes them a little too good for their price. Um, I think if there was a patch, that would probably need to be addressed. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, hope, hopefully he can get away. Some of his guys get caught here, actually. A little bit too late on pulling that Noble Horse Archer away, and he's gonna... Danko's gonna take some losses. The Bowie Eye Army approaching the Camarian Army here. Um, the Heavy Horse still very much alive, still very much a factor here. No more Javelins, apparently, for these Levy Freeman. Danko going to try and get them off the field altogether. Um, let's see here. So it looks like an infantry engagement coming. Looks like Danko is going to take the engagement. Not, I don't guess he really has a choice because the heavy horse could run him down from behind. But it's going to be a short engagement. His hoplites are going to get summarily destroyed by the Chimerians. And now this heavy horse is just coming straight into the back lines and all of his step lancers were committed. This is very dangerous. If his, if his archers start to get killed, this, this game is over. So let's see how he reacts here. Noble Horse Archer being forced to uh, engage a heavy horse. I agree with that. He didn't have a choice. He has to keep that heavy horse out of his archers. And he has to kill all the heavy horse here, which is going to be very hard because he doesn't really have the tools to do it. His uh, Noble Horse Archers have very nice attack stats, but they are not bonus versus large. Um, fortunately for him, that heavy horse didn't get a charge, but it's still going to be a very difficult target to take down. And over here, Heavy Horse getting into his Noble Horse Archers. And he's going to try and get more shots here, but reinforced by Spear Warriors. This is why this battle is going to be so very difficult for Danko. I don't know who picked first. Whether Danko picked first or whether Armenian King picked first. But Chimeria is a difficult faction, I think, to counter the Bowie with. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that there's any real great faction for countering the Bowie to be honest. The Bowie I do have a skirmish weakness, so I can see the logic taking a skirmish strong faction um, but it's still going to be difficult and as you can see his Scythian hoplites and other units are just getting beaten to pieces um, by the swords and axes of the Bowie and again he's just doing everything he can to keep these uh, heavy horse away from the archers but his light cavalry is just not going to be able to accomplish this and the heavy horse is now into his archers and in my opinion this is game over um, for, for Danko so Armenian King looks like he's going to go on a three battle streak here Started off down 0-2, but I, I just don't see how this can go in the favor of Danko at this point. There's too many swords left, and the fact that the heavy horse wasn't able to be taken off the field uh, is going to make it impossible to kite the Bowie Eye to death. So, good games uh, to, to both these players. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was uh, fun matches. Got a lot of respect for the, uh, the skill from both players. I've seen Danko play some very excellent matches before, and I've seen Armenian King play some excellent matches before. Uh, both of these players easily possess a whole lot more skill than I do when it comes to competitive play and just online play in general. So it's fun to kind of watch and see how they play um, and, and the way that they take care of things. Uh, you know what? Not everybody has a great game every time. Uh, sometimes even when you have a great game, you can lose. Uh, that's just the nature of competitive play, so it would seem. Looks like Danko trying to get into the back of these Spear Warriors, try and keep his archers alive. He's got to at this point, but uh, still a heavy horse here. Yeah, his general's dead, and then army losses are probably going to stack up. 
and he doesn't really have a whole lot of way to kite this uh, Bowie army at this point. I mean, he managed to kill a, a fair few Bowie troops, but there's just a lot of Bowie troops in the field, and that's definitely going to make this a challenge. And again, precursor javelins, if they throw javelins into the back of these wavering archers, that is it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if these spear warriors have any javelins left, but if they do, then these skirmishers are in huge danger here. Looks like he's going to bring his noble horse archer in to slow them down. I mean, a blob like this during kiting is definitely something that would favor the Chimerians, but again, look, you've already got these step archers very low morale that are wavering because the Chimerian general is dead, and all it takes is just one little mishap, and they will rout. And there's just so much boy I left. Two heavy horse still around, and if Armenian king just plays a kind of a piecemeal battle of attrition here, there's no way that uh, Danko is going to have enough ammo to kill all these units. He can just keep his cavalry in the back and sacrifice these units up here. They'll use up a ton of ammo and force Denko back against the red line, and um, it's just not going to work out, and he can just keep saving the heavy horse for, for later. And yeah, Denko's just not going to have enough uh, ammo to, to pull this off. Obviously trying to get his noble horse archers into the heavy horse, preferably. The more of them that he can kill, the better chance he has. But again, at this point, as soon as some archers get kind of singled out, these uh, heavy horse are going to be able to come in. These Chimerian heavy archers uh, are depleted. Otherwise, they may have a chance of fending off this heavy horse, but um, if they were full full strength, I would still think they might be a pretty fair danger to that heavy horse. But they are not full strength. The general for the Bowie I lived through the combat as well. Definitely, you would want to snipe the general before going into a kiting phase as well, so that the uh, so that the uh, morale bonus goes in your favor. Now, again, easier said than done whenever there's six spear units with precursor javelins on the field. It's going to make it extremely difficult. And this unit here is pretty much caught. If Armenian King wants, he can come back this way, and then he's trapped against the red line here. So this unit is going to be gone. Unless Denko gets lucky. Yeah, there's Heavy Horse coming in too, so this unit's now going to be isolated as well. It would be an easy target for the Heavy Horse. And these Chimerian Heavies. I guess there was two Chimerian Heavies. We do have some wavering from the Boya units, but again, I, I just don't know that there's enough ammo left. Archers don't have a ton of ammo, and it's one of their downfalls. Yeah, these heavy horse are going to destroy this Chimerian heavy archer because there's levy, there's spear warriors right behind. So again, these guys don't have a prayer here. Yeah, Armenian king just needs to play patient here um, and just you know do stuff like this. And that's pretty much it. These spear warriors getting in here, so even if the heavy horse can't do it. The Spear Warriors will finish the job. In fact, he probably ought not to leave his Heavy Horse in that combat for too long, just in case the Chimerian Heavies get some kills. But it looks like they're not, because they got knocked down pretty thoroughly on the charge, so... Yeah, and then Denko's caught over here. Um, this unit over here is about to get charged by Sword Followers. Yep. So these guys are gone. They're not going to be able to handle that, so the army losses are going to stack up, and... That's going to be it for Danko. So yeah, Armenian King taking away a victory with his uh, Bowie Eye Rush Army here in the last one. Uh, kudos to Danko, though, because taking a, a missile army against the Bowie Eye is a very, very gutsy choice, in my opinion. And um, it's something that I respect. I mean, it's not easy to pull off, but I respect him doing it. And he did get a lot of kills. Uh, there was just a lot of Bowie Eye on the field. Um, so you, you definitely can get kills with an army like this. Uh, you can cause a lot of problems. I mean, if you look at his Noble Horse Archers, getting a lot of kills here. Um, and for the price of those units, it's not bad. The problem is is that a lot of their kills came on cheap Spear units, so it just makes it really difficult. Like I said, that's one of the most difficult things about countering Barbarian Rush Armies right now, is that they have cheap units that are just so effective that it makes it really hard to counter that Rush, because they can just sacrifice these units, and it eats up a lot of your ammo and your own units, and... Uh, I really wish that if they run a patch on Rome 2 that they take the Precursor Javelins away from Levy Freeman. Just that alone will really hurt the uh, the Barbarian factions. Uh, not to the point where they're useless, but I think that it would it would mean that if you want to bring Spear units with Precursor Javelins, you'd have to go up to like the Spear Warriors, which cost more. And I think that it would help the balance of the game quite a bit if they did that. So, But I mean, right now, Levy Freeman are absolutely worth every penny of the 210 talents that they cost. But you see, like, if you wanted Precursor Javelins and you had to go clear up to Spear Warriors, that makes sense. And, you know, maybe there's factions out there, like, for instance, Egypt. Um, Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Let's uh, pick them. So there's certain cheap units out there that have Javelins that I'm okay with. So, like, for Egypt, for instance, the Egyptian infantry, 
uh, very cheap and come with pre precursor javelins. Uh, these guys don't have a bonus versus cav, um, so I see that being okay. Um, plus, Egypt isn't really overpowered right now at all. They do have access to chariots, so it can be handy, but their melee infantry is pretty lacking. Um, so I'm okay with certain factions having cheap precursor javelin units, but the Boei certainly don't need to be one of those factions. Uh, I don't know that the Arverni need to be one of those factions either. So again, if Levy Freeman lost their precursor javelins, I think it would be pretty helpful um, as far as helping to kind of maybe retune the game a little bit. And then also I think one of the things that makes the Barbarian Rushes so effective right now is, uh, and again, this is just kind of a side topic, but if you think about it, in Rome 1, Barbarians received a combat bonus in the woods, and uh, it was dangerous for Rome to engage them in the woods. Well, in this game, Barbarians gain their advantage through the charge, which is actually hampered by the woods. So Barbarians are actually better on open ground, and Rome is better in the forest. That's just opposite of logic and history, which I don't like. So I really wish that this game um, would also get tweaked to where the Barbarians um, still have a decent charge bonus, maybe not as punishing, but give them a combat bonus in the woods um, so that it makes more sense that when you get on a wooded map, a barbarian faction may be more dangerous. Um, and uh, in, my, in my mind, that would just be a lot cooler thing. And then take the Iceni and give them some of the combat bonus in snow. Uh, same thing for the Swaby, like they used to get on Rome 1. I just, I like the way that balances in better. It, it seems like more of a cool um, uh, feature that those factions get those bonuses in those certain weather conditions or in certain terrain. And then, of course, that would make Rome more useful um, on open ground because then their formation attack, high armor, good attack, all that stuff would make them uh, very tough on open ground and more risky on uh, broken terrain. So in my mind, I, I think that would be a little more cool way to balance the game. The game's not ruined or no fun in its current state, but there's definitely a few things that I think could tweak it and uh, make it uh, continue with a nice legacy even though other Total War games are going to come out in the meantime. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this tournament. Thank you to Attila uh, for providing the replays. Thanks to Armenian King and Danko for playing the awesome battles and keeping you all entertained. Uh, kudos to both players. Again, you're both great players, and I enjoy watching your games. Um, and uh, sorry, I just smacked making noise here with my hands on the desk. Uh, yeah, again, thank you to, uh, to Attila the Great. Check out his channel and uh, his tournament group. The links will be in the description. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.